Here we have the case of a Zenit photo sniper. The third one that I've had. The first one was stolen, the second one was burnt in a bushfire. I got my first one in 1982. It's a pretty heavy unit, so the case comes with backpack carrying straps. Like everything they made in the United Soviet Socialist Republic, it's pretty robust, designed to be peasant proof. 300mm 5 power telephoto lens focused from this knob underneath the lens. It has a preset shutter, spring loaded. It's got a fabric focal plane shutter in the mechanical camera body. No batteries at all whatsoever. The pistol grip on the submachine gun stock comes part of the deal. And inside the lid you've got a 58mm standard lens for the camera body, 72mm filters for the big lens, different size screwdrivers for working on all of the various bits and a rack for spare film. I bought it for photographing birds and aeroplanes. And once I got past the English translation of the Russian instructions, I found it was exactly perfect for birds that were tame enough to come in close. And I began to get a bit arty farty about the shots. This is actually a reflection of a mangrove sapling. That's the vanishing point. You can even do arty farty landscapes. This is a late afternoon photograph. This is the same shot in the morning when the sun is behind the headland. And the rule of threes says there's got to be an odd number of objects so you throw the cigarette packet in to balance the photograph. While the 58mm lens could be used with a self timer to take the odd self portrait back in 1980. Or 82. I think this was 82, yeah. That's when I bought the camera. If you wanted to get fancy, you could play around with double exposures using a big lens on the moon and then a small lens on the landscape. So it turns out that the idea of using 400 years of firearms technology so that you can hold your camera lens steady while the shutter is working, it's actually a pretty good idea. And the heavier the camera, the more mass it's got, the harder it is for the shutter to be able to shake it and you've got it mounted on a rifle stop, snugged up against your shoulder. It does require that you spend a bit of time using the light meter on the front of the camera body, taking a reading off the little window and the needle, using your film speed and this slide rule to determine shutter speed and aperture size, Set your desired shutter speed here. And it's a preset aperture. So you open the iris up. Set it anywhere from 4.5 to f22. Let's give it f16 there. Wind the shutter on. Focus with the knurled knob at the front. And that way you've got plenty of light to see to focus with. And as you're actually squeezing the trigger, watch this. The aperture drops and it fires. And you've taken a photograph, or I've taken a photograph of the floorboards. But that's the idea of it. The only thing wrong with the photo sniper is that the wild birds generally don't quite come close enough. 300 millimeters and 5 power wasn't enough of a telephoto effect. At least, that was my humble opinion. I just wasn't getting close enough. So in 1984, I looked around and I found the biggest production lens they made for a 35 millimeter camera. It's called a Bosch and Lone Discoverer, 1000 to 4000 millimeter. 15 to 60 power variable telephoto. And after frigging around with one tripod and then two tripods, one under the camera body and one under the lens, I went to a bench rest triple two target rifle stock, a thumbhole target rifle stock, 
because I happen to have one of them lying around too. And I fitted it eventually with a folding telescopic bipod and as well as the bipod it had a thumb hole sling to go with the thumb hole stock. This is a pretty unusual view looking back out through the lens of a telephoto camera. Cute, isn't it? And looking in that general direction at that particular horizon slightly to the right of this frame this is the view with no magnification on the horizon check the size of the trees out there this is the view of that far horizon one mile to the actual crest looking through this five power telephoto lens five power fifteen power twenty five power fifty power telephoto at a mile 60 power telephoto at a mile. Once again, 5 power from the photo sniper, 60 power through the Wharton super sniper. Looking at that particular tree, which is out there somewhere on that horizon beyond there in a standard version. And here's a shot taken from the shoulder at a thirtieth of a second at a hundred metres into a shady river across a sunlit grassy river bank. I think I kind of proved my case, the super snipe is a good idea. And here we have a crop duster at 2000 yards, an FU4, Fletcher Utility 4, coming in over my house when I lived at a place called Swallow Shit Hollow, five miles the other side of Emmerville using the super sniper. Here's the same aeroplane at a hundred yards and I'll ask you to notice that the undercarriage leg is blurred and out of focus because it's too far away. The leading edge of the wing is blurred and out of focus because it's too far away. The front of the engine cowling is blurred because it's too close and the hydraulic shock absorbing oleo strut on the nose wheel is in perfect focus because that's what I was focusing in at a thousand millimeters 15 power telephoto using a bench rest target rifle thumb stock to control a 1000 to 4000 variable telephoto here it is these days I sold the thumb hole target rifle stock to somebody who had more money than cents and I've mounted it instead on my grandfather's target rifle stock the one that I took to boarding school when I was a teenager. And here is a picture of the sun at 60 power telephoto. And the horizon's 130 miles away. And you can see the branches on the trees. You can't quite see the koala, but you can see the branch he's sitting on. And you can also see the coronasphere of the sun. Here we have the moon. at 60 power telephoto. You take those photos the day before full moon when it's high in the sky and there's a bit of background light so you don't burn out the details on the craters. Don't actually get much work for it but it's nice knowing that the project was a success. And of course there's the other way to use the Zenit photo sniper and that's when you're attending any sort of a demonstration or a public rally or a gathering and you want to keep yourself safe from the security forces just put a great big flash unit on it and take photographs of them with something that's scarier than the cameras they've got I'll leave you alone, works for me now, do you have any idea how irritating the development of digital photography has been to somebody who was actually any good at using chemical film cameras? Or how ironic it is to be using a digital camera built into a mobile phone to make a documentary about the best camera I ever put together. Oh well, life's like that, hey. Ciao.